with many present here this morning have only known an Australia with Elizabeth as Queen. Maybe a little prayer that that intrepid woman rests peacefully in the Christian faith which she strongly believed in and practised. Some of us grew up in the very early days of the Knights of the Southern Cross. I think looking around them on fairly safe ground and suggesting there's no one here that was here in 1922 when the Knights began. Although, I might have to have another look, who knows. Len, you weren't here then, were you? Yeah. One of the senior men of the team here. Life was very different in post-war, post-World War I Australia, and indeed in our world. The ravages of war were very evident in the lives of the 160,000 troops who came home, let alone in the sorrow of the families of the 61,000 men whose bodies still lie in foreign soils. The outpouring for the death of the Sovereign King then was not so evident amongst the locals. For the Irish Australian Church, led by the indomitable Archbishop Daniel Mannix, had long memories of the famine and the events of the Easter uprising were very real and cutting in those days. Discrimination was a word not uttered, and certainly not uttered at the drop of a hat as it is in our own age. But discrimination was a big factor in those days in the lives of the Catholic community. There was an oft seen sign, Catholics need not apply. That was very real in the 1920s and the group who went to Adelaide in 1956 to study for the priesthood, including myself, were amazed to find on the streets of Adelaide, in many shops, that sign, Catholics need not apply. They sort of wondered what was wrong with us. Sure, it was not the only motivation behind the call to establish the KSC. Somewhere buried in the rhetoric of those years was the call expressed today in your booklet, Service to Christianity. And so began here in Bendigo that movement. Amongst the men of the diocese to do something about it. Notice again in your little booklet that branch number three was active here in 1923. There is a line in reading one that says, I have no desire to see you in communion with demons. St. Paul wasn't writing about a football team in those days, of course. But he was asking his community in the 40s and 50s AD, a community to break with the then civic religion of idol worship. And I'd like to suggest to you this morning that we today, 2,000 years later, we have plenty of evidence in our community of new idols being worshipped and the true God being ignored. The call to break with the new idols, the woke culture, the lyrics of this ideology, which can be traced back to the playbook of the Italian Marxist philosopher Antonio Gramsci, who wrote, in the new order, socialism will triumph by first capturing the culture by infiltration of schools, universities, and the media, by transforming the consciousness of society. 
it's the subject of the new idols. And we know that idols in our history have come and gone. The KSC overcame the idol of discrimination in our community, for our community. The new idol, as I'm suggesting, is insidious in many ways. But I could make an appeal this morning to yourselves as members of the Knights of the Southern Cross to look seriously at what's happening to our culture, to make a real judgment in the light of the scriptures and then to do something about it. The Gospel further asks us this morning to be people of the real word, Jesus Christ, and reminds us that a good man draws what is good from the store of goodness in his heart. So we all need to work to make sure that our hearts are filled with goodness and goodness often is strengthened by doing good deeds. And you have a whole history of some of those good deeds illustrated in your booklet this morning. These good deeds indeed reflect upon your mission statement, leading in a spirit of service. So we rejoice today in reflecting upon the first hundred years of the KSC here in Bendigo. We must also ask the question, what of the next century? Does part of that answer lie in the call of the psalm that we've said this morning? How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? Indeed, there is still work to be done hearts to be won, lives to be enlightened, or indeed, as the Gospel suggests, sound trees to be cared for. Each generation is called to new beginnings. Our current Pope, Francis, has been calling us for many years now to new beginnings. In his little book, Let Us Dream, it is full of wonderful ideas and is a source of great encouragement for the future. It might well be a source of inspiration for your branch meeting. In one chapter, headed A Time to Choose, he speaks a word that it resonates. It is an illusion to think that we can go back to where we were. Attempts at restoration take us down a dead-end street. The little book is full of great one-liners. So as we gather, we say thanks for the past, for the men supported by their families who did great deeds and led us to this moment. I might say in a particular way thanks to the current group of knights who over the last 50 years have offered enormous support to the former community of the Poor Clares in Kennington. And we, the clergy, well represented here this morning in Bendigo, we have got to know you much better in recent years. Remember, as a young priest, there was occasionally a disappearance by the parish priest to a meeting. It was many years before he told me he was going to the night's meeting. It seemed to be a bit of a secret society in those days. But we are nonetheless grateful for your support then and now. Continue in the future to make active the line in the psalm, My vows to the Lord I will fulfil before all his people. So congratulations to the existing members here with us this morning on the inheritance you've received and on the work you're doing that summarise the first hundred years. And I wonder whether just to finish these little reflections I could ask all the existing knights to take their mass booklet and towards the end of it you'll find the knight's prayer. I'd ask you to stand and to say that prayer with me. O 
know God. Bless our Lord's members and the Knights of the Southern Cross and their families. Bless all our activities and inspire us at all times. We work for the great and glory of God and the salvation of mankind. May the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.